What's up guys, LOH to Low Tech. And if you are like me, you have probably seen this particular open frame mini ITX PC case. Uh, it's been making rounds in certain places and it has, uh, it has a really nice clean look to it. Um, and I'm probably not alone in saying that I was like, oh, I wish I could get one of these, if anything, just to, to have or to fool around with. And uh, also, probably like me, you don't have access to aluminum cutting or do not want to pay to get that done somewhere else. Uh, but I do have a 3D printer, so what can I do to get this printed? So this is a design that Honus has created to do the, the aluminum cutting. And it's a pretty nice design. It's very clean. Uh, there was a couple issues, though, that uh, made me want to not use strictly this. Um, number one is it is too big. Uh, so you, you can't really tell obviously from the screen, but this is over 400 millimeters tall, which if you have a 3D printer, having any dimension above 400 millimeters is going to be very, very rare. Um, so right off the bat, I knew that I couldn't leave this as is. I needed to make some changes. Uh, the second thing was, this was created to, do, to house a an ATX power supply. Uh, so an ATX power supply goes here, and if you are into small form factors, ATX is kind of out of fashion. They use SFX power supplies. So that was another change that I wanted to make. And then the third thing was, he was asking everybody to drill their own holes to mount the motherboard, mount the graphics card, mount everything. And I did not want to, to do that just because obviously if you have ever created a case yourself, you know that the holes need to be in very precise locations or else it doesn't work. Either that or if you have everything lopsided. So uh, I wanted to kind of take the guesswork out of that. So at first I started to just go everything freehand and just kind of make uh, an idea of where I wanted cuts to be and what kind of parts that I wanted to use. And uh, this is what I came up with, four pieces and losing the handle because the handle would not be something you wanted to use on a 3D printed part. You don't want to put uh, undue stress on the part here. Uh, this is plastic, not aluminum. And uh, yeah, pretty much just having four interlocking pieces and using it this way. So this was the, the basic rough outline of what I wanted to make. Obviously there aren't any holes or anything added into here yet, uh, but basically this is what I was going for. And this is the initial design that I came up with. So still has four separate pieces and uh, took uh, a lot of the design language that was used in uh, in Honus's original aluminum design, but I did make the changes that I talked about. I added in the, the holes here for the motherboard uh, and I also reduced the size of the power supply and also added in uh, the openings there, the holes there, as well as added in locations for pegs so that you can connect each of the 3D printed parts together, make sure everything's all lined up nice and neat, as well as since there's going to be a slice all the way across here and you have to either use the pegs or glue it together, um, having the pegs in there, make sure everything's lined up um, so nothing moves while the glue is drying. So this was the original design that I made and if you are on Reddit following the small form factor thread, then this is what you, what you saw. Um, and a few things came out of this as, as good ideas. The first thing was for the top piece, the cut was right here in between uh, these two pieces here, uh, which meant that the, the top that held the motherboard as well as the graphics card and most of the weight pretty much um, was only connected using these three pegs and was not connected to the bottom or connected to the side piece, uh, which in the end didn't provide enough rigidity to, to the top. So what I decided to do is kind of copy what I did here on the sides um, and on the sides here, I have push through pegs. So push through pegs, um, you have to hammer them a little bit, but you put the pegs through here and then they get glued here on the other side, providing very sturdy support between these two here. So the peg goes through and then you get glue it into spot here. So what I wanted to do is figure out a way to make this top piece uh, glued into this side piece here. Um, I had originally thought about adding another 
edge piece here on the side. So having uh, one, one part here for the power supply and one spot here for uh, another connector to connect to the top piece. Um, but I wanted to limit how many pieces that we wanted to, to use. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to adjust off this initial design was the, the base. Uh, the base did not provide very much support uh, for the, the PSU because there was this big opening right here. Uh, and I didn't want to make it a flat piece because that would be a lot of plastic. I didn't really want to use that. Uh, so I decided to add some more support there. And then uh, also add in a spot here for the power switch. But for, for the most part, this was the, the final design. And this is what I came up with. So for the bottom, I added another spike here. Just give it some more support without kind of filling in the, all the bottom. Added in the hole here for the power switch, as well as extended this plastic piece up here to the top so that uh, there was an additional peg that now connected to this top section of the 3D printed part. Uh, so to give it a little more support. Another thing I did is that when I initially printed everything, uh, I found that this base did not have enough support um, it was a little, just a little bit flimsy, so I added more push-through pegs uh, here, although I guess they're now just on the bottom, but they go completely through, and they connect directly into the feet. Um, so this feet now have six different pegs plugging into it, um, whereas before they only had the three here against the back piece. So now they're fully connected to the back plate and to the side plate, giving them a little more support. But this is how it turned out. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Uh, everything lines up really well um, and has given me a, a few more ideas on different cases that I want to design, kind of using this, this method. Um, not necessarily doing more open frame cases, uh, but maybe is doing stacked cases like this. Uh, so look forward to those cases coming out soon. You can download this now on Thingiverse as well as on Cults3D.